So my close friend's father is French, and recently he told me about this Chinese proverb in English. That proverb sparked my attention and really captured what change is. When the wind of change blows, some people build walls and others build windmills. This proverb basically suggests that change is inevitable, like the wind, and we have a choice in how we may react or respond to it. We may resist it by building walls or embrace it by building windmills. When I, when I first heard the proverb, I was a bit confused. What did it mean? I mean, change is so big and inevitable. How do we even react to it? Hello, everyone. My name is Amanda Wei. I'm 12 years old, and today I'm going to discuss about how important it is to embrace the change around us instead of resisting it. In fact, I can share one instance and one big change I recently went through. It's something most of us here have also went through, whether recently or a long time ago. So it was the day, August 9th, 2023, the day I was about to experience one of the biggest changes of my life. 6.50 a.m., and I was looking out the window of my school bus. I was fidgeting with my shirt, and my palms were sweaty. I was 11 then, and I had spent seven of those 11 years at a very happy and comfortable place. My daily life for those seven years consisted of tons of fun activities related to learning and 20 minutes of reading and playing for homework every day. I'd even spent a lot of my learning time by this ginormous building that my friends and I had called the Eiffel Tower. And on August 9th, everything was going to change. In fact, in 40 minutes, I was going to arrive at this brand new campus filled with so many students and teachers I didn't know. In 40 minutes, I was no longer going to be one of the oldest at a school, but one of the youngest. In 40 minutes, I was going to become a middle schooler. And I was extremely nervous, to say the least. I mean, it seemed completely normal for me to be nervous at the time. But even thinking about that then did not even remotely help calm my nerves. I felt unprepared and anxious. I'd gotten, so, I'd gotten so used to AISG's elementary school that the last thing I wanted to happen was to have this transition. Even with that thought in mind, along with all my other negative thoughts, I tried my best to push them away and enter my new school, viewing it as a place filled with new possibilities. And later that day, when the school bell rang and a song played from the speakers, when I walked down that enormous staircase, my clenched jaw and worried expression was replaced with a wide grin and bright, excited eyes. Like the proverb I mentioned earlier, oh, as time passed, I've gotten a lot more used to secondary school. Arriving at school is something I look forward to. I've gotten used to the community around me. The campus is much easier to navigate. The 80-minute lessons feel short, and new activities excite me. This has been one of the biggest changes I've been through, and I'm stunned at how quickly I've adapted and how much I enjoy this change. Like the proverb I mentioned earlier, let's think of change as this strong force of wind, made of uncertainty and confusion. That's a main part of what change is, hard to understand and confusing for the people who are experiencing it. That's also what makes it kind of scary. When experiencing change, some people might only think of that. The fear of not knowing. That's what causes so many people to try to build walls to resist or even avoid change. I've done that so many times myself. 
I focused on the negatives of change and let that completely direct my feeling about it. But change is inevitable. We can't avoid it. The wind will come over and over again, and it might eventually break down your wall. I feel like, for my change to secondary school, I've been more like a windmill. I didn't stop the change, even if I felt quite anxious about it. I tried my best to embrace it, to celebrate it even, but it definitely wasn't all my doing. The first thing you should know about a windmill is that it takes many different aspects for it to function correctly. A windmill will not work if there's only one component. How will, it, how will it be able to spin while at the same time keep steady? What will make it move? In the case of my transition, let's think of me as the engineer of this project. Firstly, I will need a tower to act as the base of my windmill structure, something that makes a windmill possible. For me, my windmill's tower was my mom. She talked with me about my transition, helped calm a bit of my nerves, and her words of encouragement were one of the main reasons why my face was lit up with that smile when I exited school that day. My windmill, with the tower, my windmill is starting to have shape and structure, but it isn't stable enough. If the wind is too strong, my windmill would collapse, just like the wall. It's the foundation that makes a windmill so sturdy and robust, which then gives it balance and stability. Luckily, I had a very strong foundation for my I had a very I, luckily I had a very strong foundation for my windmill. During fifth grade, the school organized many trips and transition meetings for the fifth graders and their parents. We visited Science Park, learned more about it from counselors and students. And even at the end of the year, toured the campus with the sixth graders then. Because of those trips and meetings, I learned much more about my future campus, and I felt relief. I felt that understanding that I wasn't going to enter sixth grade completely overwhelmed, and however nervous I was that day, I was at least still prepared. My school, AISG, had given me a great foundation in which I could build my windmill on. Now, even with these two hugely important aspects of my windmill, it is far from actually being one. And that is because it is lacking one, or actually a few, essential things. Blades, arguably the most important aspect of a windmill and the thing most people first think of when asked about it. You can't have a smooth, successful change with only understanding it and not being afraid to face it. You need to know how to be able to use actions of your own to face change and to celebrate it. Blades is a very different part in adapting to change since it isn't a factor that you can practice or learn beforehand. However, something you need to be able to do while experiencing the change. Here's what I did to get my windmills blades. I immersed myself into secondary school's many activities. I shared my thoughts in class, and I spent time to get to know the community around me. You see, before, whenever I was struck by some sort of big change that I didn't understand or want to experience, even if I already knew so much about it, understood it, maybe even somehow accepted it, I would never really allow myself to fully adapt to it. I had this part of me that didn't allow myself to do things the change offered. I would make myself small and try my best to be as little involved with the change as I possibly could. My mindset was so completely wrong, and I didn't realize it until I'd fully gotten used to secondary school, until I joined many activities the school offered. Until I'd, gotten so until I'd gotten so comfortable with sharing my opinions and questions in class. All of these things, they've made my change to secondary school so much smoother, made my time in school so enjoyable. I don't know what changed, 
what made me suddenly want to participate in so many activities after just joining secondary school, or what made me start to embrace the change. But only after months as a sixth grader did I realize how big of, a, how big of an impact my decisions had made. I've thrown myself into these activities, and because of that, I've gathered the blades of my windmill, making it complete. If I didn't make those choices, would I still be lost in school and unfamiliar with the communi community? Would I still be anxious every day before school? Would I still be lost and overwhelmed with my change to secondary school? Those are questions I don't want to answer or even know the answer to. What mattered was I had made those choices. And because of that, I had made a windmill. A well-functioning, tall, strong windmill. A windmill that did not try to block change like a wall, but rather embraced it. One that would not collapse due to the winds, but would get stronger because of it. One that did not see change as negativity, but as this strong force full of positivity that would help it grow and become better. Now that you've heard about my experience with change, what are you going to do? Are you experiencing change right now? Are you thinking of building a wall or a windmill? If you don't have an answer, I wanna challenge you to do something. Change is something we experience many times every day. So now, when you experience change, don't try to resist it, don't try to hide or avoid it. Instead, I want us all to try to embrace it, to use actions of our own to face change. After all, change is a challenge, change is scary, and change is inevitable, but it can be faced. You can face change. As long as you can face it with confidence, you are becoming stronger and more resilient altogether. Thank you very much.